Hi, and welcome to Canyons U Bite Size PD. Today we're going to talk about navigating the SST module in Dashboard. I am Laura Tuesday Heathfield from the Instructional Supports Department. Um, and just a reminder that um, this session is being recorded. So if um, there you go. <laughs> okay, so the, here's our professional development norms. Be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. And just those are in play all the time in all of our PDs. Also, because it is being recorded, if you're on here, mute your microphone and turn your camera on only if you're comfortable. And if you have any question or comment, just type it in the chat or um, turn on your mic is fine too. So today's um, content is embedded in our CSD um, MTSS framework, particularly um, data for decision making and team based problem solving. Our learning intention for today is I am learning about the SST module in dashboard in order to support students by maintaining SST referrals and tracking student progress. And you will know that you're successful when you have enough knowledge to navigate the SST module and utilize its features to monitor student referrals and student progress with interventions. So to access um, the student support team um, module, you need to go into CSD data dashboard and it, the login is dashboard.canyonsdistrict.org. And typically it will go to your home page and your home page um, contains modules and tiles for um, the most frequently used um, modules, but you can change how your home page looks by editing your home page. And to do that, one thing you can do to find your um, where you want to go or the SST module is to select the launch pad and select the particular module. If you go there a lot, you can make it one of your favorites. And so your favorites will be the ones that appear on your home page. And so to do to change what you have on your home page, um, you change in your favorites. There's a little gear button up at the top of the favorites icon on your home page. And if you click that, it will open up every single module there is that you have access to. And one of those if you're on an SST is um, the SST module. So you can just click it to green and then it will appear on your homepage so you can easily access it um, if you use it frequently. Another thing I wanna alert you to is there are resources on the homepage. And if you click on that resources button, there are several things that pop up and some, are, some do pertain to the SST module. So you may, if you have a question, you may find the answers in one of those resources. So keep that in mind. And also, if you have ideas for additional resources that might be helpful, we can add them to the resources tab. So I'm going to walk you through the SST referral process and how to use the SST module with your team. So to create a referral, you simply go to find a student. And as you type in the student's name, it's going to be searching in your school database for that student. So you don't have to necessarily know the entire student's name. But if you know Johnny, start type, typing Johnny, then anybody with uh, the name Johnny will pop up and you can select the student that you are interested in starting a referral for. Um, once you put the name in, the student's information will pop up because they're obviously in your school. And obviously I've removed identifying information here, but um, that blue link that is um, in the ID spot is an active link. And if you click on that for that student, it's gonna take you to that student's data. So when you're having, for example, a discussion in your um, SST um, process, and you want to look at a student's uh, previous data or whatever data that they might have already prior to having a referral, clicking on that will take you to their data page and previous test results, um, 
and other information that might be available that could help aid in the discussion around your referral. Um, so as you're creating a referral, obviously the referring in information needs to be there in terms of who's referring, but it is important that um, the teacher must be in contact with or the staff must be in contact with the parents or the family regarding the issues prior to that referral. So there's a, a way, a section there to detail information about the concerns, but also when the parent had been contacted around those concerns. We definitely want to keep families involved in the process. Um, and also they have valuable information that can help us um, determine what might be a good course of action for a particular student. But that's a text box that can be, you can be pretty detailed regarding the concerns that are expressed or a summary of the discussion you've had previously with a parent or guardian. Once you create a referral, the reason for a referral has multiple sections. There's like five different, I'm sorry, seven different sections. And if you click on the little plus sign, it's going to open up that section to multiple items that you can provide additional information about. Academic learning, social emotional learning, um, critical social emotional concerns like thoughts of suicide would be in that category. Anything related to physical health, developmental status, parent and family engagement, engagement or basic needs like vision and hearing can all be um, documented in that referral if it pertains to that particular um, cause for concern. Um, also, you can upload related files. So if, for example, um, there's a previous um, summary report regarding a particular student or um, there's been some data collection on paper pencil that you can scan and put into a PDF or leave it as a doc file, um, all of those can be uploaded um, just by clicking the little blue upload file and it takes all different kinds of things, pictures and recordings and PDFs and docs. Um, I, I would advise you to name it carefully so that you can find things later. Um, so maybe with the student's name in it and what is in that particular document so that you can find relevant information as you're discussing a student. So once you have some referrals, there's obviously going to be a list of referrals that are in your school's SST module. And another point I want to mention is that once there is an SST referral or an SST case, it doesn't go away. It stays in um, that module. And obviously you can um, have different status of different cases, like it could be a concluded case, but it needs to stay in there for um, reasons that a student may come up for referral at a later time and you want to review previous information. But all of these, um, there's ways to search for whether you, if you're trying to find a particular um, case, you can search by a specific year or have it defaults to all, but you can uh, search by the current year. Um, you can also search by student name or a status of case, whether it's a pending uh, SST review or whether it's a closed case. All of those can be um, searchable terms in order to find um, a particular case that you're looking for. Also the little up and down arrows by each of those categories, student ID, student name, grade, referred by, referral date, status, and action are sortable in terms of ascending or descending. So if you're looking for um, a particular status of a pending case, um, sorting them through status might pull up all the pending cases for you. So there's different ways to um, try to sort through uh, multiple referrals. And as you can tell, I'm in the tab for all submitted referrals. So it's gonna be a larger um, list of cases than it might be if you were looking just at your own referrals. So in that top part, obviously we're, like I said, we're looking at all submitted referrals, but you can also, I'm sorry, also can look at your own referrals. So if you've made three referrals, it'd be much easier to search that tab than all submitted referrals. And it kind of depends on your access as well. If you're a regular member of the 
student support team, you probably will have access to all the referrals. If you're a teacher who has referred a couple of students, but aren't you aren't a regular member of the SST, you might just be invited for discussions around that particular student. They'll probably be in that My Referrals tab. So once there is a referral in the system, um, it can become a case after you've referred the case and, and had some um, plan for what you're going to do, whether it's further discussion, whether it's collecting more data, whether it's recontacting a family member um, or uh, planning an intervention. So your cases are gonna be in that top tab as well. And again, there's an all in a my um, category for those. So you can um, look for a particular case. And the little folder icon to the right of whatever case that might be, and I've removed names here, um, opens up the case, that particular case, so that you can read all of the information about the particular case. Um, so the case status could be ongoing. It could be resolved, meaning it's a closed for now. Essentially, it's not a, an active case or it could be periodic monitoring. And these are cases that an SST might want to revisit um, every other month or every six months or some particular time-based um, uh, monitoring, not necessarily reviewing it um, every month or every week. And again, this um, tab two is also searchable and sortable like the previous, um, like the referrals are. Um, in addition, I think I mentioned that the, the little folder icon opens the case for you. Um, the little blue tab in, I'm sorry, in the top here that says add a new progress note, it's a good idea to keep notes about every discussion that you have as an SST regarding a particular student, and you can just add them by date, and so the, they'll appear in sequential order. Um, and then you can view each one as well. Um, what is a great idea in your progress note is to document what the action steps or the next tasks are so that you can view that in, um, in your list so that you kind of have a quick eyeball on what, what the next steps are for each um, progress note of those of a particular case, student case. And just as in a referral, you can also add files to a case. So, and again, they can be in any format. You just click on the blue, upload the file. Again, caution that try to name them cleverly so that you can find what you need later. Once there is a case opened, um, you can also add interventions. There's a blue add a new intervention button at the top, and that will open um, a new tab that you can describe what, what the team is going to do in terms of an intervention. This is an example of a student that has two different um, check-in, check-out um, interventions from different dates. The status of one is ongoing. The status of the other is um, unable to determine because there have been attendance issues. It's a daily check-in, check-out, et cetera. So you can be as, again, as uh, detailed as you want. And then you can view to the right, clicking on the blue icon will open up that particular intervention. And I'm gonna walk you through an intervention um, right now. So if you click on the student interventions tab, it's going to bring up any student that is currently um, receiving some type of intervention. So you can name them reading intervention group, a check-in, check-out. There's particular categories that you can select in terms of a type of intervention. Um, you can also sort by them. So if I just want to look at my self-monitoring kiddos and see how each of them are doing, I can sort by that and pull up just those um, particular kinds of interventions. And again, to the right, I can either open up that particular intervention to record data, or I can open up the case, for example, if I want to add a progress note. You can also create groups, which might make it easier to find the kinds of kids that you 
are tracking. So you might create a group that's all your check-in, check-out kiddos that are current, as opposed to everybody who's been in a check-in, check-out um, intervention. Um, or it could be the check-in, check-out um, students that are in fifth grade versus fourth grade or third grade or ninth grade. So you could define that group however you want that would help you find um, the particular type of um, intervention that you're looking for. So this is what the interventions tab kind of looks like. And again, you're going to get all that information about the student and that ID um, will be live. So you can look back at um, a previous test data if that's helpful. Um, but in the, the, as you're creating an intervention, you're going to select the intervention. It could be um, any of these. It could be check in, check out. These are the ones that are currently in the module. Study skills group, structured recess, et cetera. We can add addi additional um, choices if, if that would be helpful. Um, just let the dashboard folks know. Here's where you record the status. It could be ongoing. It could be the criteria has been achieved. So we're going to continue um, interventions or change the intervention. There's been adequate progress to achieve the goal. So we're just going to kind of maintain over time. It's possible the intervention was unsuccessful, so we need to revise it or add additional components to the intervention. And like in the previous example, we were unable to determine due, due to attendance issues. So we need to continue because um, we're not sure if this is working or not. Start date, end date are pretty uh, self-explanatory. The frequency refers to how frequently you're going to be collecting data on this particular student. And the choices are daily or weekly. And um, then you're going to get um, a way to collect data right in the SST system itself. So it has um, the date that we created the data set. We're going to name the target behavior that we're trying to change, um, the type of data to be collected. The choices are counting, which is frequency, duration, minutes, or percentage, and then how frequently we're collecting, daily or weekly, what our goal is. So this needs to be a numeric value so that we can create a, a graph that has a target. And then you can add notes as well. So then when we're data tracking, every time we add a data point, we need to enter the date, the value, and any notes that might be pertinent. There's also a way to add a break in the data. So say we change the intervention and we want to note that on the intervention graph, um, we simply enter that as a break in data and it will show up on the graph. So this is an example of the tracking system in the um, student support module. So the blue is representing those um, numeric values that you saw that we were entering weekly. Um, the green is the goal line that we had set. And the black will be an automatic trend line that will um, be drawn based on what the goal is and how the student is progressing. And the pink arrow is pointing where we had put a data break. So we were getting really variable data and we made a change in the intervention and got good results. So that's how it tracks in um, the SST module. It's a great resource for schools to be able to have all their information in one spot on dashboard. Whenever you're in the SST system, whether it's a referral or a case, there's always that link to um, that student's um, data that's in dashboard, which is very handy when you're discussing a student and someone says, I don't remember what their reading level was. You can very easily click on that live um, link and access that particular student's information in dashboard. So the other question we often get uh, is about how to get um, notifications of SST referrals. So if you are a case manager or you're an administrator or you're um, coordinating the SST, um, it probably would behoove you to be notified of some of them. 
Um, some want to be um, notified maybe of just students who are um, students with disabilities who are referred. It just depends on what your preference is. Um, so to do that, you simply click on that um, little red gear icon at the top of the SST module. It's essentially how you set up settings. And you will need to create a custom group. If you've created a custom group in dashboard mining, it's basically the same process. You have to tell the system what the group um, looks like. So you would name the group. Um, I would strongly suggest adding the school year just because um, that might change from year to year and you don't really know what group you're looking at. How you will include the students. So it could be in selecting individual students. So these five students are I'm responsible for in my case management. And these are the five I want to be notified about. Um, or you can establish a particular rule, which I'll go through in a moment. You can also provide a pretty detailed description of your group that you're following and then decide whether you want to be notified by, the, by a text or an email or both. So as I said, you can select a rule. So a rule would be helpful if you, for example, are responsible for um, or want to be notified of every student um, who's referred. If you go through individual students that are in your student roster currently, as a new student comes into your school, they wouldn't be included in that group. So setting a rule allows students to, to come and go from that group, depending on the criteria that you set. So currently we have a couple fields that you can select a, a rule about. One is name, one is student grade. So the most common one is administrators who want to be notified of every um, student support team referral. So last name is often a um, common one. So uh, identifying the student, oops, sorry, identifying the student name from AAA to ZZZ will likely include every student that's in your school. Um, and then if you wanna be notified by email or wanna be notified by cell phone, you need to enter that information in, in the SST module itself or both. You can obviously do that as well. So there is an option for um, a school phone number, and that's basically within dashboard, the dashboard system, there's a way to um, generate some reports. And sometimes it's nice to have the school phone number on there. Um, it's not necessary, though, for notification of SST referrals. So that's basically SST referrals in a nutshell. And um, if you have ideas for modifications to the SST module itself, I'd encourage you to click on the um, help icon when you're in dashboard, because that's how we get ideas for um, changes that would be helpful for student support teams as they're meeting to make this a more functional um, process for you. And obviously I'm available to answer questions if that's helpful as well. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.